very good morning and welcome to NBS Breakfast Meeting. This is a meeting that brings you commercial and business ideas that you need to get in the time of the lockdown. Now, Uganda has its 42-day lockdown. And of course, the pandemic trying to ravage the world. And of course, Uganda is not exceptional. And this morning, we'll be talking about how the youth are going to be managing into this time of uh, the pandemic in the wake of uh, the destructive uh, COVID-19, the, the United Nations uh, program, a uh, development program that is UNDP in Uganda has engaged with NACE to make sure that the youth uh, who, uh, who have entrepreneurial aspirations uh, to develop and also refine ideas uh, for products and services and solutions that address challenges in the following sectors of health, agriculture, ICT, tourism, uh, mining, renewable energy, manufacturing, creative arts, and many more. Joining me this morning is uh, the executive director of NACE, uh, that is uh, Mr. Uh, Dennis Aguma. Welcome to the breakfast meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you this morning. My pleasure. Um, we are broadcasting live from the Summit View in Aguru, and of course this is the next media park. Yes. Hope Thank you found you. it amazing. It's a brilliant view, actually, outside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What is the Youth Ideathon, and how does uh, the initiative work? Uh, the Youth Ideathon, uh, as you can tell from the two words, youth uh, and then Ideathon, I think there's quite a, uh, quite a word to, 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 to separate. Idea and then thon. Thon comes, in, uh, comes from the, like a marathon kind of thing. So we're looking at business ideas, and we're rallying young people, specifically the youth, to come up with business ideas. Um, all businesses start with a simple idea, uh, and someone acts upon that idea, and with some help and support and funding and mentorship, it gets into a proper big business. And with the lockdown, uh, we think there are huge opportunities for the youth to, uh, especially those that have been having some ideas and playing around with them and not knowing where to go and how to start, the Youth Ideathon is here to support them. All right. Um, many people would ask, what is NACE? Yes, we are the Association of Student Enterprises. Our work mainly focused on uh, vocational colleges and higher education institutions, uh, working with young people in universities uh, to make them entrepreneurial. We've done events, the most popular of which is the LEAP conference that has inspired quite a number of young people. But often after that, we put them into different incubation centers and they go and start their businesses. Mm -hmm. So this has been a fantastic opportunity uh, with support from the United Nations uh, Development Program, who have been running the Youth for Business uh, facil they have a youth for business facility that supports youth businesses, but this is the first time that they're venturing into businesses that are younger than 12 months. Um, I think in the past they've supported businesses with grants of like 10,000 to 40,000 US dollars. And then it turns out that there's quite a number of young people that their businesses are not established, they're not registered, they just have an idea. And with lockdown, I think it was a perfect opportunity to reach out to those businesses and support them. All right, tell us about uh, the Youth for Business Innovation and Entrepreneurship Facility. Yes, as I mentioned, this is the facility that's supported by the United Nations Development Program. They focus mainly on uh, doing things differently. Innov mm. Innovation is at the center of it. Creativity is at the center of it. Impact is at the center of it. Uh, the youth especially are also at the center of it. They focus on quite a number of areas, strategic areas for Uganda, agriculture being one of them, tourism being one of them, and you'll see some of those sectors are also reflected in the Youth Ideathon. There's quite a number, in fact, agriculture, uh, tourism, uh, health. Health is actually one of those that we think has a huge opportunity with COVID uh, ravaging the country. There are huge opportunities. The other day I was seeing, uh, uh, you know, products like Covidex, you know, Ugandan-made products that people are actually reaching towards. Uh, we've been drinking all sorts of concoctions, you know. Uh, so there are opportunities out there, even though the situation is really terrible. Um, other categories are like the creative industry. You know, that's something that we've been very passionate about, especially with young people. We see uh, a lot of young people in the creative space around advertising, around gaming, you know, the kind of games we grew up playing in yeah. ESO. Mm. Imagine if you were to put that game onto a console like Xbox. Mm. Uh, and, you, you know, when you're dealing with... Uh, a game. It's not just one game on an Xbox. Someone has to play the music and someone has to design that music for the game. Someone has to do the graphics for that particular game. Uh, and it gets streamed live and people are playing. There's a whole industry around that. So the creative industry is one of those that we're rallying young people to, to join. But there's quite a number on our website that people can actually look at. All right. What exactly um, is a UNDP investing in the youth entrepreneurship? What is the logic behind this initiative and its timing? Mm. The UNDP is one of uh, Uganda's biggest development partners. Um, and of course, uh, a lot of work 
has gone into supporting uh, businesses, as I mentioned, mainly because Uganda, blessed as it is with a very young population, very fast growing population, actually one of the fastest growing populations in the world. Sadly, the vast majority of our young people are unemployed. Um, and uh, the United Nations Development Program has really had quite a number of initiatives to look at addressing youth unemployment. <clears throat> and notwithstanding the ongoing initiatives, there was need, I think, to also inspire young people. So part of the idea of strategy and focus is also to inspire. The people who are going to participate in this, not all of them are going to win the 100 million shillings, but one of or two individuals having participated through this will be inspired so that the next time they ever come up with a business idea, they know how to go about it. Um, and uh, uh, so, so there's, there's two aspects uh, that the UNDP is focused on supporting uh, and addressing this issue of youth unemployment and enterprise and entrepreneurship world over has demonstrated that it's a very mm. powerful tool to alleviate poverty. Okay, back to Ideathon. Um, where can the youth get these ideas from? Ideas come from very many places. Uh, sadly, as we are in, a, in the lockdown, um, every time you have a challenge or a problem, uh, those are huge opportunities uh, to innovate, to come up uh, with products and services because every business starts with a simple idea. And often the best ideas are those that are addressing people's needs, you know, people's pains. Right now, people are trying to get food to their places. They're trying to move from point A to point B. They're trying to send stuff everywhere. Mm. Uh, and I think uh, in the last lockdown, UNDP did a very good job with Jumia by trying to bridge that gap between the marketplace um, and, uh, and the products and services, getting them to the customers. So there are so many ideas. Just look around you, uh, whatever ha is happening in your, in, your, in, your, in your situation, address a particular need, uh, and there you are. But there are other uh, ideas about, um, we call them like symbiotic ideas. So you have a good idea, I have a good idea. The two are separate, but together, Boom. Mm. Uh, so there are others what we call derivative ideas. You know, they are derived from something. You go to a cafe, the coffee is terrible. You wonder why no one has served a better coffee. You do something about it. The packaging mm. is terrible. You do something about it. So there are quite a number of areas that um, people can get ideas from. And part of the idea thon, we have assembled a team of over 80 mentors uh, and experts in the various spaces to help guide your idea. So we've lowered the bar so low that we're focusing really just on the idea. Uh, so at, at, at the application stage, young people out there should not be, this is not your usual uh, World Cup hackathon. No, we're really keeping it simple, mm. focusing on everyone, including Omuntu Awansi, focusing on all regions. Um, the idea is to submit your idea and then we help you uh, bring it into uh, almost a business, but towards the end, we are looking for really brilliant ideas that have potential to scale, ideas that are addressing the challenges that we have at the moment with COVID, ideas that have potential to employ um, young people, uh, and we'll, we'll be there with you for quite a while, uh, giving you uh, finance, uh, incubation support, and very many other things. Right, so which categories are you looking at? Um, the categories, I think there's about nine of them, uh, agriculture, tourism, um, health, uh, the creative uh, sector. Um, I think, uh, to summarize, because we're short of time, best to go on our website and see a lot of information now there. And the website is undp.nase.co.ug. All right. So how will the winners be chosen? And uh, what are UNDP and NAS looking for from the submissions? Yeah, the winners will be... We, we've done quite a number of uh, some of these... Uh, entrepreneurship related events and most of them tend to be a Kampala thing and we've, uh, we've taken on board the feedback from quite a number of, of participants. There will be winners in every region. So if you are in the north, west, east, south, there's four regions. So there's going to be regional winners. There's also those eight categories. There's going to be winners in each of those categories in each of those regions. So there are so many uh, business opportunities. I mean, uh, grants that are going to be won. There's also going to be an opportunity for someone to win at a national level. Um, so, wherever you are, in whatever region you're in, it should not matter, you should not be put off. Uh, mm. Just go on the website, apply, uh, and you may not necessarily win the national one, but you'll get something uh, from the region as well. All right, so what are the benefits from this initiative? Um, quite a number of benefits. If you ask very many people who are starting up, they will tell you that their biggest challenge uh, is funding. Uh, and the UNDP, uh, as I mentioned earlier, through the Youth for Business Facility has been supporting enterprises, even before this uh, Jethon started, with grants of anywhere between 10 to 40,000 US dollars, 
uh, they have made funding available for uh, this Youth Ideathon. So in the first instance, there's going to be some finance available. But really, it's not about the money. We know that starting a business is hard, and often money is not really the real issue. Yeah. The real issue is the ecosystem uh, around you, the network and the support around you to help bring your idea to life. Uh, so one of the things we're doing, we're going to have what we call uh, thematic sessions. So each of those categories, mm. we're going to be live streaming uh, with a panel of experts in each of those areas to help young people identify what the challenges are in those particular areas. So if you are talking about tourism, it's going to be a whole day about tourism, looking at where the opportunities are, what the challenges are. Um, so after the two weeks of the thematic sessions, then we go into what we call uh, master classes. And this actually take your idea from just an idea uh, using uh, some tools and techniques uh, with quite a number of our partners as well to help bring your idea to life. Perhaps one of the things I should um, also mention is, uh, and we've seen a lot of this with uh, uh, some of the players within this space where people's ideas have really not been protected. One of the things we're very particular on and uh, the viewers out there, anyone who's going to participate should uh, take heart in the knowledge that we are focusing on protecting the intellectual property within your ideas. And uh, we will work with you to protect your idea. We're already uh, in talks with the Registration Services Bureau, with our partners, Isla, to make sure that uh, ideas that are patentable are saved, and we will help you to patent some of those ideas uh, if they actually meet the criteria. So it won't just be about money, it's a whole, and then we also have a whole incubation. Uh, for over six months, we'll be working with you holding your hand quite literally, making sure that the grants that you get are used for the purpose that uh, they are intended, which is to, uh, to, to, to help bring your idea to life. Perhaps one other thing uh, to mention talking of grants is that these grants are actually going to be given out by the UNDP. So it won't just be me and my next colleagues doing it. No, ours is to rally young people, take them through this process. So anyone who is listening, this is not Biwa Bianswa, it is real, uh, and you'll get your money at the end of mm. it all. All right, the ecosystem of uh, the innovation ecosystem in Uganda is growing so fast, mm. and um, the innovation and entrepreneurship is so important in this thing. Uh, wh why do you think that the innovation and entrepreneurship is so important in uh, solving uh, development pro uh, problems? Mm. Uh, two things in there, actually, one of which is uh, the ecosystem approach. Um, at NACE, we believe in an ecosystem approach. If you see the idea, thing, it's not just run by ourselves, we are working with quite a number of uh, players. The UNDP as well believe in an ecosystem approach because what has tended to happen in the past, there have been lots of efforts, even from government, but they have not been coordinated well. Uh, so we are really very keen on an ecosystem approach and engaging all our efforts, um, uh, making sure that the different players actually come together uh, and, and, uh, and deliver the, the youth, not just the youth idea, but actually even other projects, projects and programs that we have in the pipeline going forward. Have you looked at uh, the innovations in the media sector? Because I'm not seeing media as a sector. Uh, media, one of, of uh, the nine. <laughs> uh, media is one of the creative industries. Mm. In fact, we find uh, just just the other day, my colleagues and I tried to put together the uh, the, the youth idea thon. We didn't realize or appreciate uh, how much work went into live streaming until we attempted to do it ourselves and then realized, actually, we can't do this. We have to get an external person mm. to do it. Even this kind of stuff, I'm looking at the setting here, it's, it's a serious. Um, but now, because of uh, COVID and the lockdown, um, there has never been more urgency for live streaming. Mm. Content is a huge, huge thing. We have uh, influencers that are helping us to share some information about this. And these are real jobs that never existed years ago. So back to the question you asked me earlier, for instance, uh, the importance of uh, innovation. No economy out there has ever gotten to world class without being innovative. And one of the key parameters for an innovative country is how many ideas are being patented, uh, how many intellectual properties are being registered. That gives you an idea of how creative a country is. So you don't need to have lots of oil and, and things like that. I mean, countries like Singapore have demonstrated that through sheer creativity, innovation, and gut, a country can actually rise. Uh, and, and we're hoping to unleash the power of enterprise and entrepreneurship to address some of the youth uh, challenges uh, here in Uganda. All right, so the idea thon is here and many youth are uh, preparing to make sure that they put in their submissions. It's so not, what next? It's not that they're preparing. We've already had over 1,000 ideas, oh. would you believe? And we started the, the campaign in, uh, in, a, in a week and a half ago. Mm. So there's a, there's, it's obvious that there's a clear hunger out there. Uh, I don't know whether it's to do with um, lockdown and people have a lot of time on their hands, mm. but there's a huge hunger out there and we are very excited about this. Uh, but if you haven't heard about the Ideathon, 
and you still want to participate in the Youth Idea Fund, it's not too late. The deadline is on the 25th of uh, July. Uh, but don't wait for the deadline because there's a lot of support that's going to be happening between now and then. Just go onto the website, which is undp.nase.co.ug. We also have a telephone number, which is 070 Could you repeat that right. number very slowly? <laughs> and the website as well. Yes, the website is uh, undp.nase.co.ug. And the telephone number is 70 I hope I got that right. You, you were so fast. I, I should tell you to repeat again, <laughs> kindly. Yeah. 070 mm. right. Yes. So what could be your rallying message to the youth out there? Because right now we're in the 42 days and beyond of the lockdown. And mm. we guess that the youth need to have that inspirational, innovative statement mm. from, from maybe NACE or UNDP in this time. Yes. Um... It's, it's really, um, how, do I, how, how do I call this? Uh, I've been looking at adverts going like, Chijakugwa, um, uh, what I learned in the, in the first lockdown was I set myself some mini targets. When we're coming out of this pandemic, what will I have gotten out of it? We have 42 days for young people. If you're not doing much at home, really, what's the worst that could happen? You know, that idea that you've been sitting on, why don't you actually submit it and see what could happen? Um, so uh, my rallying call for the youth is that uh, there are not very many jobs out there. Even if you're in university, you should not really be training to go out there and get a job. We, were, we are hoping, of course, if you get a job, well and good. But the vast majority of our young people are going to be out on the streets. What better way, especially if someone is giving you the time that you have under lockdown? And it's quite a lot of time. Um, very many people are idle. Uh, we are going to have lots of challenges with, with mental health. Uh, I was reading articles the other day about uh, you know, youth pregnancies and things like that. So there's a lot of idleness out there. And my rallying call to the youth really is, let's use that time during lockdown and help you, not just to come up with a business idea, but to give you a hand so that out of lockdown you can say, when we're in lockdown, this is what I did. All right, thank you so much. Now, um, I'll, I'll, I'll drop you back just a little bit on the question. There is a youth who is deep down in Kisoro. And there's one who is up there in Kotido. Yes. <laughs> How is the idea then going to bridge them? Do you have branches opened up there or are they going to be online? Mm. Because you know the broadband of Uganda these days is quite mysterious. Yes, yes. Are they going to be operating online or are you going to reach out to them? That's a very interesting challenge that we've had to grapple with. Uh, we've had to be very creative in how shall we reach out. So first and foremost, we've been uh, running our campaigns, not just here in, uh, in Kampala, but on um, radios across the whole country. The other day I was on Radio West, my colleagues were on uh, Radio Teso. Uh, I think tomorrow my colleague is going to be on uh, Voice of uh, Toro. So the message is going out to almost everyone. We had initially planned to have actual hard forms taken on to all these radio stations, uh, but of course because of COVID and even the idea that you're giving someone a piece of paper is a bit, um, you could be transmitting COVID without you realizing. So we have a toll number, so that number that I shared earlier, people can actually call that number. Um, and my colleagues, if you're not able, for instance, to get online, will talk to you. And we are, <laughs> our team actually has uh, languages almost in, uh, we can speak at least from about six different regions, uh, the languages on, on, on the call center. Um, they will take uh, your, your, your call, they can register the idea for you. Uh, most of this stuff that I talked about earlier, the thematic sessions, uh, the master classes are all going to be recorded, so they will be live streamed, but they're also going to be available on our website so that if you sign up, you can watch them on demand. You can mm. go back and watch them on demand. Uh, we're going to do some audio uh, clips as well. We are engaging uh, someone to actually translate, uh, not just the materials that we're going to use, mm. because there's someone in Kotido or Kabale for that matter might prefer that their content is in Ruchiga. So some of the conversations that we're going to be using are going to be translated. Uh, but the task is enormous, uh, and uh, some of the challenges, we are discovering them as we go along. So whatever challenges people have, uh, we, just the, the other day we encountered challenge of someone who was uh, disabled, and uh, they are visually impaired. How do you deal with that? Uh, we were not prepared for that, um, but luckily one of our colleagues has been, uh, Manana has been uh, uh, helping put on shows. This is where the creative guys come in, mm. and helping people who are deaf, enjoy a live concert. Can you imagine? How do you do that? 
Very awesome. So he, his, his uh, past skills came in handy. So uh, let no challenge uh, bother you, uh, whatever challenges you're having. Just call that number or send us an email, info at nase.co.ug, and we'll look into that. Okay, your last remarks as we conclude this show. My last remarks is that Uganda uh, has been credited uh, countless times as the most entrepreneurial country in the world. Uh, it has a huge population, most of whom are very creative. And I want to rally young people that we should not look at uh, lockdown, sad as it may be, uh, as the world is coming to an end. I think there are huge opportunities out there, not least of which is time. So let's use this time uh, creatively, uh, collectively. We can give you support uh, to bring those ideas uh, into life. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Dennis Aguma, for that wonderful discussion and on Ideathon. Me. The Ideathon is right here, and all you have to do is uh, to go on the website of uh, the UNDP. And of course, uh, if you're to be in this uh, very um, competition, uh, you have to be very, very creative. And of course, uh, all the other displays that have been mentioned, go there and have your idea put on table and be exacted. And of course, made bold for you to achieve bigger in this uh, lockdown. All you have to do is to go on undp.nse.co.ug so that you can register uh, your idea. And of course, uh, the call number is 070 uh, zero 08 so that you can also receive information more about ideas the breakfast meeting continues shortly after this commercial good morning